Well, it's your boy, Big Clive, six and a half minutes, and now the wife is going to ask me why my pants smell like bleach. Impact gun from the land of the rising sun, J.A. Pan. They got a mess special there. Nuclear-powered uh, entropy cuts both ways. High five, Chinese death. That is to say, death in Chinese and... Oh, we ought to pixelate that one. Dot J. Pan. You can get tools built in that country rather than uh, the other one. Look at that. So we're going to see if the ones made in Japan are any better than the ones made elsewhere. Uh, Clamshell got some spazzy ray gun <laughs> greebling. We won't begrudge them that. Uh, some... High speed injection here. You can see the whitening of the fibers come to the fore and kind of make that a little bit whiter than the rest. It's got the same urethane kind of low durometer. Well, not super low durometer, mid durometer urethane bush in there, pin in order to preload. That just acts like a spring. Preload the battery. And look at this cork stuffer already. You can tell she's a higher grade of tool. Nichicon brand capacitors. It's got a 40 amp uh, automotive fuse in there. Omron branded switch. Terminals are all encased in a resin. Even all the Molex connect. So instead of being a single wire, in order to aid assembly, they have some connectors. And the connectors even have celastic on them if you'd focus you look at that incredible got a little silicon kearney bushing on the bottom of the omron switch i couldn't see any markings on here but dollars to dog nuts that would be made in ja pen look at this they've color matched the epoxy anti-tamper uh, holding any bit with the rest of the casement it's incredible Nice bellows on the switch. Not much of a toggle there. I have a, a snap action on the switch. It doesn't matter because, of course, this is just feeding back into the brain box to give you the speed control on account of this being a brushless. You know, you got to hand it to blind prostitutes. <laughs> All the handwork really makes it a good finish. Look at that. All kinds of heat shrink on there all kinds of beautiful little details make you happy in the end taking off uh sorry i just coveted all over you there i don't know if you saw that ball of split fight award you new claws saturday night there is the board for the hall effect sensors in order to measure each of the phases of that brushless DC motor. I was hoping to see where this board was made. I can't tell. That looks like Chinese because it doesn't have that happy looking backwards E. But it might just be the more formal Japanese. I can't say for sure being a uh, guaylo myself. I mislaid my green magnet viewing film, but we can sort of extrapolate here. There's one, two poles, three, four, five, six. Is that right? Let's see. Let's start at a mark. One, two, three, four, four splits. So four poles. And that would be, instead of, yeah, this would be diametrically magnetized. So north and south on the inner and outer OD, the OD and the ID. And then you would have one that is actually axially magnetized. <laughs> uh, this guy, in order to bear, so to speak, on the Hall effect sensors. And there's a little polycarbonate cock ring on her with a silicon carney bumper, buffer. 
You see that seal is a double lip seal or a single lip seal, but it, it, it does have a, a seal on there. And the color of that is Viton, high temperature seal. That's not a normal bearing. That's a higher performance, a higher performing seal anyway. This housing is really nice. Beautiful die cast aluminum, straight aluminum. Reverse thread. Again, keeping the riffraff out. That's a left hand thread. Or is it? I'm all mixed up now. Yeah, it's a left hand thread. It's a very thin cross section rear bearing. Of course, as soon as you get out of the typical catalog cut bearings, they get exponentially more expensive. There's the anvil and hammer. I'm very surprised at this not being a forged hammer. However, it does have some molybdenum disulfide grease in there. And one planetary gear reduction. Really surprised at that anvil not being forged, so having a look here. Focus. Fuck. There we go. At the pinion. Sure enough, that is a sintered gear there, powdered metal. And you can see they've there's a bit of a lead in on those uh, splines there. And also a little hole for retention, which is surprising. Or it might be just to let the air out as they, uh, as they heat this and press it on. And just to make sure it, it goes to its home, might have a hole in there for the air to get out. Looking at this now, a little closer. It appears to be forged, but they've gone through the additional step of coating it in some sort of copper goo, copper-esque goo. Eh? Eh? Yeah, you can see see that. Uh, that's forged there. This being a Japanese tool, we'll have to pixelate this out, but hard as a wedding prick. Learning close and looking real carefully, you can see the difference in the texture between the centered metal part and the forged part. Forged, centered. There's a little piton. I have no idea what it does. I might need to dust off my Spanish and refer to my buddy Manuel. It appears to go there. So it's on the outside of the casement, and it's just a momentary little tactile switch, so it can't be doing much. Maybe an auto shut off to say you bottomed out, or maybe instead of needing to pull the trigger to get the LEDs to light, you can do it with this little switch. Just above the switch trigger is a hand button. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, we got that out. Let's see what this says. Ah, look at that. Wood or bolt. Thin for tech cable or tech screw. Blow light. Strike rank. If I feel it, I feel it. Hm. Now, shocking to me as a North American, they, Makita actually builds these for their domestic market. They build them better than what they do for export. <laughs> what the fuck are they thinking over? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.